and welcome to episode 5 of Fun with Robotics. As I mentioned in last week's wrap-up, I've been doing a lot of painting lately for a number of different projects. And boy, things got messy really quick. So if you've been watching any of my previous videos, you probably will guess that I decided I needed a cart to store all of my painting products. So I designed the cart around some of the most typical containers that you're going to run into when working with paints. Uh, for example, you've got your one gallon metal can of house paint, uh, either the plastic or metal uh, one gallon cans of paint thinner or lacquer thinner, or whatever it might contain, uh, typical spray paint cans, the one quart version of the metal container for paint thinner, lacquer thinner and such, the round metal one quart containers, and the round metal one half pint containers, as well as these painting trays and the liners that go in them. And some of the other tools that you might run into is a variety of small rollers, large rollers, and sponge rollers, as well as the rollers that fit on them, the large, small, and the, the wide small ones. And things like stirring sticks, sponge brushes, regular paint brushes, and something that I've been wanting to try for a while is these low pressure air guns. So I haven't done it yet, but um, I've got all the equipment and I'm, I'm just dying to give it a try. So let's have a look at the cart and see it, how it's all stored. So here's the cart. It's fully loaded with all my painting products. You can see that it's on casters, so it's easily mobile. Uh, the casters that I've used are from Home Depot. They're a ball bearing caster with a urethane wheel. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive and they, they work extremely well. I've used them on all of my carts that I've built previously. So I'm sticking with them. Uh, I think they, they work out really well. Now you can see that the cart is designed around the size of the typical containers of uh, painting products that you might come across. On the bottom here are the uh, sort of squarish cans of paint thinner. Uh, the one on the end happens to be a uh, paint stripper. But the size and shape of the cans are all very similar. And you can see that there's not a lot of room uh, above it. It's just enough to get the container in there, to be able to get your hand in there and, and remove it and then put it back when you're done. That way it saves space for, for other things above it. The next shelf up is for your typical one quart round container of paint or polyurethane in this case. Uh, again, not a whole lot of room, just enough to get it in there and get it in and get it out. Above that are the half pint cans of, of paint. And then above that are all of the spray cans that I have. And they are stored at an angle. And it makes it really nice to, to be able to um, lay them out in almost like a color pattern so you, at a glance, can see what are the colors that I, you know, I've got plenty of, or maybe I'm doing a project and I want to use a particular color, I can see almost immediately, just with a glance, that, oh, if I'm going to use this color, I've only got one can of it. I better go out and get another can. So it makes it easy to see what you have and, and maybe what you need. Again, I like the fact that these are on an angle, cans are not going to be falling out. They stay in there quite nicely. This top shelf is at an angle, but it has sort of become a dumping ground for a variety of, of painting uh, equipment. Uh, I'll get back to that in, in a minute. I'm not really happy about it, but uh, for now, it's, it's where I put these things. This top unit here was envisioned to be uh, a storage for those small one ounce type testers, uh, bottles of paint 
that you might have for touching up a model airplane or model rocket. And you know, you can fit them in here. You can get a, a variety of colors um, and you can see what you have. Uh, I don't have any at the moment, but that's what this was envisioned to store. On the other side, on the top, is really just a, a set of rows of, of storage. This first row is really just uh, paint brushes, your typical paint brushes. Uh, the second row, again, is paint brushes, sort of an overflow, and then uh, some sponge type brushes. The third row is your uh, rollers, smaller rollers, various size rollers. And then the fourth one here, things like uh, stirring sticks, some scrapers, um, got a different type of scraper, one that has an actual steel razor blade in it, um, and something like this, which is a uh, oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> A, a caulking tool for spreading out caulking in the corners. This is actually a caulking removal tool. So little tools like that are, are stored in there. And then here I've got just a sort of a, a cleaning set for um, the low pressure um, paint guns. Uh, on the sides, I'm storing things like these paint trays. This one actually has a out of line in it. Um, on the bottom are different size rollers. On the other side is more paint tray liners. And uh, if you're just using a, a smaller roller, different liner for that. And then if I turn it around, You can see that on the bottom, just enough room for your typical one gallon can of typical house paint. And then above that, the one quart version of paint thinners and some more uh, just random storage. And there's more storage here for spray paint cans. Um, this cart was originally, my, my original vision was strictly to store spray paint cans. So that became sort of the major storage area for this cart. Uh, it, it then morphed into, hey, let's store all the painting products together in one cart. And I think when that happened, um, I made some design flaws with this cart. And it's, it's nice, but uh, I, I would change a few things. And uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. I, I don't particularly like these end bins. I'm having the same problem with these end bins that I did with the sandpaper cart. It's a little flimsy with this material on the end. And I used the brass nails to hold these on, and it was coming off. Now that's easily fixed with a couple of screws, but I just, uh, I think I can do better in terms of storing what's in here and the other bins. Um, I think the idea that I'm going to go with is to extend this cart out, maybe another foot. I'll extend the top piece out a foot, the bottom piece out a foot, and put another board along the outside. I'll leave this one in place. So I'm really only replacing the top and bottom boards. I'll remove these, these end bins, and I'll put some more storage in here. And that'll be specifically for storing things like the, the LP gun, um, the, uh, the filters for the paint, uh, the, air, the airbrush and the, and the hose for it. And I also have a compressor for the airbrush. So I'll make a, a specific spot for that. Um, since I don't have that actually worked out at the moment, 
I'm not going to do that until I can solidify in my mind the actual design of how this is going to lay out on the end. Uh, so we'll probably end up revisiting this cart. But for the moment, uh, it seems to work pretty well. It certainly has gathered all of my painting tools together and has kept them organized and is working well for uh, at least most of what it was designed for. So I know I said so, I wasn't going to do this right now, but I got inspired with a couple of good ideas and my brain just wouldn't let me move on until I made these changes. So let me show you what I did. I extended, as I said in the previous section, uh, this top and the bottom here out exactly one foot and put another side panel on and obviously move the casters out to the end. Um, I have a section now here where I store the compressor for the airbrush. And then above that, I made some little compartments for the paint cups that go with the low pressure air guns. And then just a little cubby here I have for uh, an air hose. Then one, uh, one shelf up, I made I got rid of the one on the top where I was storing all the brushes and I put them down here. I made it a little bit more compact. So all these, uh, these two inch brushes and one inch brushes are stored here. And then this is just sort of like a little drawer. I mean, it doesn't pull out or anything, but just a little place to keep small hand tools like the, the scrapers, uh, a small roller brush, and these I really wanted to try and find a, a, a spot for these specifically, but they ended up just generally in the, in the little drawer here. Let me turn it around. So I was able to get rid of the two end bins on that side, but I couldn't get rid of this one. I just didn't have a place to store um, these paint trays and the liners. So I'm stuck with this at the moment. It's okay, I, I shored this up a little bit. It no longer tends to come apart. And now I'm just storing the rollers up here almost as if they're uh, spray paint cans. And I made a spot to store the individual spray guns. They just sort of sit in there. There's a little bit of uh, possible future storage if I get another gun. Um, I don't plan on it, but if I do, it's there. And then I made this little rack at the top for all of the, the rollers. And they just kind of sit in there, hang in there, and uh, it's pretty neat and organized. So I think that works out pretty well. So I think uh, with those changes, I can move on, finally. And I will come back and I'll give you some rough dimensions, and then we'll do the wrap-up. Okay, so the overall length of this is including the end pieces, 42 inches. The height of it is 49 inches. Let me just try that over here. I think I was grabbing part of the yeah, it's like 49, and it turns out to be 49 and an eighth. Um, this section here where the shelves are is 28 and a half. The uh, distance obviously is the size of a, a can, but that's about three and an eighth. Uh, the height of this bottom shelf, there is eight and three quarters seven and three quarters, five, five and three eighths. This is 14 and a half. This is 11, no, 11 and a 16th. And then this is 19. There is a center divider here. And then the depth of that is seven inches on this side. And on the other side, also seven inches. Um, the 
width is going to be about uh, 14 and 3 quarters. Makes sense. 7, 7 and 3 quarters. Um, on this side, the height of this shelf is almost a foot. Five and a quarter, three and five eighths, and then these are the same as the other side. Um, most everything is three quarter inch plywood, except for some of these little dividers here. I've used half inch, and then over here, um, this bin's made out of three quarter inch and just uh, one quarter inch plywood on the end. I think that does it. For anybody that may be asking themselves, do I draw uh, plans for these carts before I start building? Well, the answer is yes, but I don't use a computer program or anything like that. I mean, I could, but I don't. I basically just sketch them out, um, try to come up with the idea on paper. Uh, I usually do um, a side view, a top view, uh, and then I write out my materials list. So here is the, the plans for this cart. And I'll just quickly show them to you. Hopefully you can see this. But this is basically just showing the dimensions of the major pieces that I'm going to be cutting out. And then um, I did a, a side view here. You've got the, the center divider with uh, some small paint cans on the top. Um, the paint cans at an angle, the one pint, one quart, and one gallon cans. Notice I changed the design. I was going to have that on an angle originally. Um, and this is a, a top view with a couple of dimensions. And then a front view where I've got uh, small spray paint cans, the regular size ones, one pint, one quart, and one gallon cans just a, a rough view of what it might look like. And that's it really. And I pretty much do that for all of the carts that I'm, I've, I've been building. So nothing too fancy, just sketch out an idea, uh, write down the dimensions that you think you're gonna go with. Not that it won't change as you're actually building it, but you wanna get something fairly close. Well, that's a wrap for episode five of Fun With Robotics. If you have any questions about this week's build of the paint organization cart, you can shoot an email to info at theroboticscodedepot.com and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Stay tuned for next week when we first see the appearance of a robot on Fun with Robotics.